What's up guys, my name is Sean with White Jade Productions and today we're going to be talking about noise and does more resolution or a bigger sensor help with that noise because there's some very conflicting arguments online, specifically on YouTube and Instagram. I've heard a lot of people saying that more resolution is bad and a bigger sensor is better. Both of which could be true, but are very, very conditional. I think there's this idea that for some reason, a smaller resolution sensor, like a 4K sensor that's full frame is going to perform the best. And I think largely uh, Sony's contributed to that with the FX3, which is actually not Sony's best performing camera in terms of noise. It's actually the Venice 8K or 8.6K, and we'll get into that in a second. First, we're gonna talk about what actually causes noise. I have my laptop with me today, so we are definitely going to be looking at some numbers. So this is gonna get a little bit nerdy, but nothing too crazy. If you're very interested in this, you can definitely research it yourself. There's some interesting stuff out there. First off, noise and signal to noise ratio is the key component. And that just comes from a lack of information, specifically a lack of information in the shadows. Noise comes from the shadows. So always overexposing will give you less noise. But when it comes to sensors, actually resolution has the biggest impact on noise. A higher resolution sensor will yes, have a smaller pixel pitch, but in today's engineering marvels of cinema cameras and mirrorless cameras, we're actually finding that more sensors that are being released with higher resolutions and yes, a smaller pixel pitch, which does increase the noise, the pixel pitch does, it actually is at a ratio which is better for noise. And first I wanna talk about the FX3 and the Venice 8.6K. And we'll talk about the Venice 6K sensor as well. But these cameras I feel like are very uh, comparable, obviously because they're Sony um, FX cinema line cameras. I do not think that the FX3 is a cinema camera. If you disagree, you can write a comment down below. I don't think it is, but that's not what we're, we're talking about today. First, we're gonna talk about uh, the resolution of each of these cameras. First things first, let's talk about the FX3's sensor. The FX3 actually pulls its sensor from the A7S III. It's not that new of a sensor. In fact, it's pretty old, but old sensors can be gold. And you'll find that we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Uh, first off, the pixel pitch is 8.49 microns. Microns are gonna be our reference point, And that is actually very, very good. Uh, the larger that number, the better. That means the more light it's letting in. But I think we wanna think of uh, pixels as a pool, um, especially when it comes to dynamic range and things like that. The pool just gets bigger. It doesn't get deeper. So it's not like a bigger pixel pitch is gonna get you more dynamic range. It will fill up more with light and that is what reduces noise. So if you think of it as a pool or a bathtub that fills up as it rains, the light is rain in this analogy, then you'll find that you can think about this a little bit better and it'll make a little bit more sense. Obviously, that pixel pitch is very large, about eight and a half microns. What about the Venice 2? Well, let's talk about the 8K variant first. It is 4.17 microns or 4.2 microns. Um, that is about half. And if you think of it in terms of resolution and the pixel pitch, you'll go, oh, okay, so they're about comparable. No, not at all. 8.6K versus 4K and 4.2 microns versus eight and a half microns. You would think that's comparable. No, it's absolutely not because we have to go off of a square law. Resolution is not a linear scale. It, it doubles very quickly. So when you go from 4K, which is in the Sony FX3's case, a 12.1 megapixel sensor, all the way up to the 8.6K Venice 2 sensor, which is 40.2 megapixels. If I do the math, Hold up, I'm, I'm not gonna try and remember the math. I did it I did it earlier in research. I wanna pull up the exact number. It is 3.322, and then a bunch more decimals, which we're not gonna talk about. But about 3.33 times as much of a resolution to pixel pitch ratio. So in other words, what that means is, yes, your pixel pitch is decreasing. In other words, you know, that, that pool that we're talking about, it is shrinking about, about by 50% uh, it's shrinking, but the resolution is increasing 3.3 times as much. So if we wanna think of that in terms of noise, yes, you're losing a lot of that capability of retaining light, but you're increasing so many pixels instead of having that one pool, you're having 3.3 more pools 
even though the pools are about half the size. I would take 3.3 more pools and half the size of pools. Obviously that equals a higher number. We're getting less noise on the Venice 2 8.6K than we are on the FX3. FX3 obviously has a lot of built-in noise reduction because it's not shooting raw or some higher, uh, less lossy codecs, but that number in and of itself will mean if both cameras take that raw data, the Venice, 8.6K is going to have less noise. And, and, and we'll dive into this a little bit more. Let's look at the Sony Venice uh, 2. It's a 6K sensor. That has a pixel pitch of 5.95 microns or 5.6 microns. Um, it meets somewhere in the middle. It's still a little bit better than the, than the um, FX3. And I would actually argue 6K is just a better resolution in general, uh, but you can do the math there yourself. That's 24.4 megapixels. So it is double the, the megapixels, a little bit more than double the megapixels, um, but it is only losing out on about half a micron, or uh, sorry, one and a half microns, uh, looking at the math right here. So again, double one and a half, then you're still getting uh, 0.5 as your positive number, meaning it's still more efficient than the FX3 in terms of having less noise in its sensor. Again, that's why I think 6K sensors are better, but let's let's talk about another camera. Let's bring it into uh, another brand. Let's talk about the Red Dragon 6K. In terms of high resolution digital cinema cameras, the Red Dragon is definitely um, referred to as one of the best in terms of noise patterns. In other words, its noise pattern is very, very pleasing. I'm shooting on it right now. I'll increase the noise a little bit um, and I'll sprinkle in a little film grain. You try and figure out what's film grain and what's noise. Good luck. It's not easy whatsoever. It has a very pleasing noise pattern. Um, and as for it being a very, very old 6K sensor, the oldest 6K sensor, um, it has a, a pixel pitch of five microns. So a micron worse than the Venice 2, giving that age difference is actually insane. Um, it still handles really, really, really well. Um, compared to the FX3, I put them side by side. It, definitely handles worse, just it being older. Red cameras are very light hungry cameras, especially the older sensors. They just need a lot of light. Um, and that can be another factor that I wanna talk about, power. The more power you give a sensor, uh, usually the better it performs. Um, I'm not that much into the science of this, so I don't really understand it as well. But when you give a lot of power to a sensor, it's gonna handle better at higher ISOs, um, lower lower light volumes coming in, which is why you will see um, newer cameras like Blackmagic adding these uh, B-mount batteries that are 24 volts instead of the traditional 12. Uh, it's also where you're gonna see dual ISO or dual gain sensors behaving differently. Uh, the reason that exists is when you up your, your dual gain, for example, the FX3 going from, from 800 all the way to 12,800, you are adding an amplified signal to the sensor. Um, and when you do that in a calculated manner, you get more controlled noise. Uh, you get better noise reduction essentially, and it behaves a little bit better. That's super complicated. We're not gonna get into that. But I wanna talk about one more camera before I end this video. I know this has been such a nerdy video. Thank you guys for watching so far. If you've gotten this far, like and subscribe. That means you're a nerd like me and we like nerding out about cameras. This is the Blackmagic Ursa 17K. This is the highest resolution um, production cinema camera in existence right now. It has a pixel pitch of 2.9 microns. Um, I'm gonna figure out exactly how many megapixels that is real quick. By the way, megapixels are just a very easy way to do these calculations instead of doing a bunch more math. Megapixels are very easy to look at. It is 140.8 megapixels. That's what, that's what the 65 millimeter format versus 17K is. That is insane. That's hundred more megapixels than 8.6K from the Venice 2. Now, <laughs> if we wanna do that math against the FX3, we're about to see some insane numbers. So we're gonna divide 140.8 by 12.1 from the FX3. And that is 11.63, 11.64 when rounded. That is an insane number. 11 and a half times as much of a, of, a, of a resolution. That's insane, completely unneeded. But what happens is when you divide that by that, uh, that uh, essentially micron pixel pitch amount, we're gonna look at that and that's gonna be 
Um, you know what, let's, let's go above and beyond. It's essentially three microns for the Ursa 17K and eight and a half, but let's just divide that by three. Dividing that by three gives us 3.9 when it's rounded. Um, you can see that right there, there's my math, just to prove I'm doing it. Um, 3.9 times as well. So it handles noise 3.9 times as well. I'm sorry if I'm waffling through this. Uh, I'm low key trying to understand these big numbers as well. So Ursa 17K is gonna kick butt when properly exposed. And that's the kicker right here. I know that a lot of people watch so far and they're going, yes, but I've worked with these cameras or I've seen these cameras and you know, I, I watched uh, A Great Unknown and you know what? Yeah, they shot at 12,800. FX3 still looks better at that ISO. And that is for a lot of reasons. Um, mainly that yes, these cameras are gonna perform better with noise at a proper exposure. Cinema cameras aren't meant to be underexposed. Red never ever once up until the Gemini 5K and even after that they didn't care about anything that wasn't properly exposed. They're cinema cameras, there's gonna be lights on set. If you have a cinema camera on set, you're gonna have lights on set. So they, they have never bothered and they currently don't really bother um, with making low light sensitive cameras. That's where the FX3 comes in. That's where the Nikon Z6 III comes in. That's where, um, you know, the Canon C80 comes in. That's where Lumix's uh, S1 or S1 Mark II comes in. Is that the name of that camera? Um, that performs actually a little bit better than Sony at 12,800. That's where these cameras come in. Uh, they they want to kick butt in that category. Um, as far as cinema cameras are concerned, they are only concerned about reducing noise at a proper exposure. Actually, when you're shooting raw on any camera, um, there is an argument to be made on some cinema cameras that uh, there isn't a native ISO. Um, RED has confirmed this in a lot of their cameras. Uh, they'll tell you that, hey, for the Dragon 6K sensor, which is probably one of the best performing digital sensors of all time outside of ARRI, that it does not have a native ISO, and that's true for a few other RED cameras, that they recommend you shoot between like 400 ISO and 2000 ISO, and not to really exceed those barriers uh, for you know points of dynamic range and stuff, but that there's not really a native, and testing shows that the native kind of actually hangs around 1000 ISO, ISO on this camera, very odd, but that's just the difference in thinking in going from mirrorless over to the cinema world. It's not really the same and both companies and cinematographers slash DPs also think of that in a very different way. All in all, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you've learned that the ratio of pixel pitch to resolution is what will determine how well a camera performs in terms of noise and uh, this is the, I think the, the equation I'm technically using. So if you wanna figure it out for yourself, all you have to do is figure out the resolution in megapixels for your camera, compare that to whatever camera you're looking at comparing to. I would almost always compare that to the FX3 just because it is such a good low light camera. You do the math on that, you uh, divide by the resolution, and then you divide by those microns, and then you divide the resolution by the microns, and that gives you your number. I did that a bunch in this video, so you can look back and fact check me. If I messed up at any point, please let me know down below. This is kind of math heavy, and I'm not super great at math, so maybe give me a little bit of forgiveness. But thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time.